Dr. Mark Changizi here through Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about how, although we have color vision, and, and although the screen that you're watching this on is in color, and the photographs, physical photographs, prints that you have are in color, um, and TV and movies are in color, none of those are actually providing you color vision as it's intended. Um, so. Uh, let's back up and describe why it is that we have color vision and then describe what it is that these particular kinds of mechanisms that we call color um, aren't in fact doing what color vision does for us in real life. Uh, so for example, the reason that we have color vision at all, this goes back to a 2000 discovery of mine while I was at Caltech, and uh, I've talked about it before so I'll go fairly quickly through it. We don't have a generic kind of color vision where we have cones that are sensitive to low wavelength and medium wavelength and long wavelength sensitive code, code uh, cones, uh, retinal uh, 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 neurons that are sensitive to different parts of the spectrum. They don't, we don't have them such that they're uniformly distributed across the spectrum. Instead, we have a very low wavelength sensitive one that dogs have as well. And then rather, have it, rather than having sort of the middle wavelength sensitive cone that all of the other mammals have, which is up in around 550, we have two over there. We've got one around 540 and one at around 560. They're side by side. So we've got one way down there in the blue, the low wavelength sensitive code, and two side by side. Now, that's a weird, peculiar thing. And it's not a good idea in terms of a generic spectrometer with only three parts, you know, th the ability to sample three parts of the spectrum. Um, it's not good for finding fruit per se. It's not optimized for finding leaves in the forest or anything like this. It turns out what it is optimized at doing is letting you see the emotions on bare skin. By virtue of having that peculiar sense of two different sensitivities at 540 and, and 560 nanometers, you need to have exactly that kind of sensitivity to see the variations of oxygenation of blood under the skin how hemoglobin changes its conformation and how its spectrum looks as it gets more and less oxygenated. And you also need to be able to see just where there's more and less blood under the skin. That's variations in the concentration of blood. By virtue of having our three cones in those spots, we're able to see two dimensions, sort of a blue-yellow dimension and a red-green dimension, and we can get a sort of a two-dimensional palette that helps us see state on the naked skin of others. So. Uh, it's an empath sense. Color vision is an empath sense that we evolved. In fact, nakedness and primate color vision evolved, at, at sort of simultaneously evolved, co-evolved. They um, are opposite sides of the same coin. Uh, now, this camera uh, that you're watching this on, or this TV screen, this computer screen that you're watching this right now, sure, you see colors. You see you see some green in the background. I don't really see much red at the moment back there, um, but there's sort of reddish bricks that have red features in them. And, and, and there's a, uh, we've got blue sky and uh, maybe some yellow tint to some of those, oh, there's some yellow reflections maybe back there, right? So we have, in some sense, the full two-dimensional palette of, of all of those hues, the hue circle. And of course, we've got grayscale as well. Um, but the cones on your camera there's no cones, there's filters on your camera, are uniformly distributed across the spectrum, which makes good generic sense. You wanna just capture the different kinds of, to the extent that you can, with three filters, capture the variability across the spectrum so you just sort of sample uniformly. But in doing so, you're not picking up the thing, the red-green signal that we evolved red-green for, above and beyond what the other mammals have, is to see those particular oxygenation modulations of blood under the skin to help us see the second dimension on skin to let us see health and emotions and state and so forth. The cameras don't pick that up. The cameras don't have two filters in, in those spots that allow you to be sensitive to that. You can't see the two dimensions of blood and health and state under the skin when you're watching TV, when you're watching all the pictures of your family, um, and when you're watching me right here. The deep emotionality that comes with colors, that is, this is the reason colors are, are emotional. You might, why, why should we have all these arguments about emotions, about co colors and what color to paint the walls and what color to wear? Why are they so deeply emotional? We have such strong opinions. It's because colors are about emotions. Colors 
are emotions on the faces and the bare skin of others. Right? That's what color vision is for. And yet all of our color television and color movies and color prints aren't capturing the very signal that color vision evolved for, which is this empath sense. Right? Imagine how much more evocative uh, this would be, and imagine sports or porn or whatever, you know, actual actual reality TV where people are actually emotional and actually modulating their full colors as they would in real life. Now, you're not typically consciously aware of these things in real life, but when you're in front of somebody, for example, if they're about to cry, their face hasn't even changed. Uh, their face uh, shape, expressions uh, in terms of the muscles in the face haven't changed, but you can sometimes see there's something going on and you instinctually react, or you see that they're pale and they're about to, to, to collapse uh, because they're, you know, they're, let's say you're the coach and it's one of your, your uh, uh, student, uh, your mentees or whatever, right? You see these things in real life, you react instinctually and you feel the emotion without consciously realizing that you're, you're doing that. And all of our three, all of our color modalities that we use to capture all of this is missing it, right? And it's not just something little, it's the most emotional part, right? It's so important that when they're building Disney films, for example, and even in the 1940s, they would put, you know, make the bunny rabbit blush in Bambi, right? Little bunny rabbits and other animals are blushing on their furry, you know, cartoon faces. Um, it's important enough that when comic, comic, uh, you know, cartoonists and artists, they put these things, they, have, they harness uh, these colors all the time in very abstract forms to emote all of these feelings in the observer and the viewers of their art. Cartoonists do this, comic strip writers do this, um, CGI uh, movies uh, do this, um, but we still can't do this with actually, you know, with actual uh, uh, cameras today. Our cameras, our color prints, our color cameras, our color movies are missing the full skin TV, full three-dimensional color TV because it's missing the ability to see the skin, the emotions that are on the skin, the state, the health, and the, you know, the, all of these, these cues that we get in real life. Um, and that was your science moment. If you're interested in these sorts of things, this is a topic that is discussed in my earlier book, bestseller, uh, Vision Revolution. Go take a, a look at that. Uh, it was published back in 2009. It's been, you know, re it's still in, in, in print uh, today in, in 2022. And uh, get yourself a copy of uh, Dr. Tim Barber and my book. Our newest book just came out uh, last month, Expressly Human, also about emotional expressions, but more generally, uh, what they mean, uh, what they are, how they work, a grand unifying theory for what emotional expressions are. And that's where Vino Optics come in. So Dr. Tim Barber and I started this company 12, 10, 12 years ago and have patents going back uh, farther than that. Our technology understands and takes seriously what it is that our color vision evolved for. It's for these empathic signals. Right? Other color blindness glasses just shift colors around. They don't actually uh, augment your ability to see these empath signals. In fact, they hinder your ability to see these empath sig signals because they're not, they're just shifting things around. They're actually making it worse. Our technology only works in real life. It doesn't work, help you with, you know, see these empath signals through TV screens and on photographs because that signal is already lost by the time the photo or the camera uh, took it. But in real life, you know, optics technology optimizes that empath signal, whether it's for seeing health and for veins, for medical personnel, or whether it's for colorblind folk who are missing this sense or very handicapped at this sense, or for regular folk with their free X glasses that just optimizes your ability to see these emotions in the first place. And that was your science moment.